Hold on to your butts. These are the Squashbuckler Diaries. Welcome back. My name is Guy Hasson, and you are listening to the Squash Buckler Diaries podcast, the podcast about Joey Shelley, the girl who lives in dreams. And right now, in season one, she lives in her father's dreams. Who knows what will happen later when she finds out she's in a dream and that there's a way out. But that is for season two. And actually, it's, it's actually for Lost in Dreams book one, which happens between season one and season two. Um, anyway... We are in part two of a big uh, arc, bigger than we used to. And we are learning the actual dangers of the dream. What happens when the dream doesn't protect joy, when uh, Justin's subconscious doesn't protect her? Last time she was swatted by a giant and her father woke up and she got... Basically, she could have died. And now she's landing in the forest unconscious. So let's see what happens to a a four-and-a-half-year-old girl who has lived in the dream all her life lived a life of adventure, and is now unprotected, not that she knows it, uh, by a father. Let's find out. And forgive my hoarse voice, I'm still, I don't know what's happening. Uh, hopefully it'll be over in a few days. Episode 185, In the Land of the Giants, Part 2, Justin's Return. Joy's age four and a half, told by the Red Dragon. Dragon Lil lay unconscious in the forest of giants and did not move. My sharp dragon ears caught her breathing from my hiding place kilometers above her. My sharp dragon eyes could see between the leaves how her chest was rising and falling with slow breaths. She was alive and lying on top of a leaf bigger than her entire body, between blades of grass three times as high as her. Bunny's Revenge, their flying pirate ship, lay on the ground far, far away in the middle of the forest, Turned on its side, its mast stuck in the ground, the cannons to one side stuck in the ground as well. Tied to the mast was the long rope that, on its other side, was tied to a mere the giant's stolen gold. But the gold was no longer there, it had vanished. The rest of Ymir's planet had also disappeared when Dragonfather disappeared. Ymir disappeared as well, blinking out of existence. As did his house. The only things that had remained behind on the giant's planet were the forest, the ground around the forest, and Barney's revenge. There was silence on the planet, but not within the ship. Within the infinite prison, in the belly of Barney's revenge, more than a hundred incarcerated villains spent their days in their own cells. They did not disappear as well when Dragonfather vanished daily. No doubt with the ship upturned, they had all been slammed against a wall, which was now the new floor. I heard rumblings, grumbles, and questions, but no one had broken out of his, her, its cell. After a few minutes of silence, Dragonfather appeared on the ship. Dragonfather always appeared at exactly the same spot, in exactly the same position, on the deck of Bunny's Revenge. He had vanished a few minutes earlier, as I told you yesterday, when the giant swatted the ship and had been thrust against the mast. I hear the dreamers wake up in fear when that happens. After a few minutes, they are able to settle in, come down, and fall asleep again. When Dragonfather appeared, the giant's planet shimmered into existence immediately, just as it had been when Dragonfather disappeared. The gold returned to the basket. Ymir the giant appeared at the edge of the forest and began to walk into the forest, searching for that gold. Dragonfather, standing on an overturned deck, fell down to the ground. He blocked his fall with his arms and quickly stood up. He looked around, concerned. Joy, he shouted, joy, but there was no response. Joy, he looked around, his concern clearly growing. He looked up at the overturned ship, a jetpack appeared on his back, and in an instant, he was thrusting his arms against the top side of the deck at full throttle, trying to straighten his ship, but the ship did not budge. Joy, joy, he kept calling as he tried this. The ship still did not budge. 
He now flew to stand sideways and upside down on the deck, hands on the wheel. By pushing, prodding and turning, the ship slowly rose from the mud. It stopped after reaching the height of the trees, pulled down by the weight of the gold in the basket. A sword appeared in Dragonfather's hand and he cut the rope tight to the mast. The gold basket fell down to the ground. Now the ship could move up freely. Dragonfather returned to the wheel. Bunny's revenge quickly floated high above the forest. Dragonfather ran from one railing to another, looking down. Joy! Joy! he yelled. But he could not see her and could not hear her. Holy shit, he said, holding his head in his hands. Holy shit. Tomorrow I will tell you what he did to find his four-and-a-half-year-old girl. Told by the Red Dragon. Hashtags Joy Justin. Holy shit moment. The Land of the Giants. Ymir the Angry Giant. Justin lost his daughter. His daughter almost died. What happens next? We'll see tomorrow. And now, the credits. The Squash Buckler Diaries are written and read by me, Guy Hassan. All the tags mentioned in this story are searchable at the website. You can find all the stories there in written form and in fact 150 Squash Buckler Diaries more. The Squash Buckler Diaries is the diary of Joy Shelley, the girl who lives in dreams. She'll be called the Forgotten Girl by her father. She'll be a true heroine. She'll change the world. This project shows her entire life from birth to death. Check out the website at guyhasson.com. That's G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N.com. I've been an author and playwright for more than 30 years, and this is the first time I've used the guyhasson.com website, because the girl in the dream is my life project. If you have questions, if you want to comment, please do. You can comment at the website or email me at guyhasson at gmail.com. That's G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N, G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N, at gmail.com. The theme music is called Brass Gentleman and is created by Thomas Harudek. My name is Guy Hassan and this is my life project. Come back tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow for more.